Welcome back to another edition of Components Breakdown. Today we're going to take a look at AEG's newest 2 to 5 player deck building game called Nightfall. Nightfall is based in a future world gone eternally dark due to the setting of the sun, in which creatures of the night seek to rule not only over each other, but also over the last remnants of the human race. The game introduces several unique twists to the deck building category of games, in which I will cover in greater depth in this video review. Just be warned though, the mechanics and gameplay that it encourages may feel somewhat unfamiliar to fans of the genre, which make it quite unlike any other game currently in the market. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the game. Nightfall is a combative, head-to-head -head style of deck building game where the goal is to utilize your minions and actions aggressively in order to inflict as many wounds on your opponents as possible. Now knowing up front that this is a pure confrontational style of game, which drive the mechanics and tone are essential for gamers to understand in order to best appreciate what the designers are trying to accomplish here. Now let me say that again in a more simplistic way. Nightfall is all about destroying your opponents, and the game makes no apologies for trying to be anything other than that. So if you are a deck building fan who has enjoyed the genre thus far because of its mostly non-interactive style of play, then be ready to have that mentality stomped on and thrown in your face because this game is all about being destructive. So in Nightfall there are essentially four types of cards that are included. First, there are the wounds, which represent the injuries that you have endured through the course of the game, and will therefore get shuffled into your deck any time you receive damage. There are effectively three types of wounds. There are bites, burns, and then bleeds, all of which share the same exact text and don't have any different gameplay mechanics between them except for very specific tie-breaking purposes at the end of the game. Now my hope is that future expansions will in some way key off of several of these different types of wounds, or at least capable of utilizing their keywords in more effective and unique ways. The second type of card in the game are minions, which represent the numerous factions of creatures and followers that you can bring into play and control. Now the base game currently has four types of factions, which include vampires, lycanthropes, ghouls, and hunters, which are essentially just the human resistance. The third type of card in the game are actions. Actions are one-time instant effects that can be played into a chain after which they are placed in players' discard piles. And we'll talk more about these chains as we get into the gameplay and mechanics. Purchasing and using these actions are essential to creating links and longer combinations of chains as well as directly damaging other players and their minions in play. The fourth and final type of card are the draft cards, which are one of the most unique aspects and features within the game. There are 24 draft cards in the base set, which represent each of the 24 unique minions and actions included in the game. Draft cards are essentially placeholders that assist players with the game's setup, but are taken out after the initial draft and prior to the actual start of the game. Draft cards are easily denoted by the draft screen on the card's front sides as well as the watermark on their back sides. Looking closely at the two main order cards in the game, which are the minions and the actions, we're going to find several common denominators between these two different types of cards. First, both sets of cards have card names attached to them as well as a claim cost that is required to acquire them in your deck. Think of claim costs as simply purchasing costs, which in Nightfall is done with a resource called Influence. Also on both sets of cards are text areas, and they come in three different varieties in the base set. The three included game text varieties are Chain, which take effect when the card is resolved regardless of whose turn it is. Then there is Your Chain, which only takes effect if it is your turn. And then finally there is In Play, which only appears on the minion cards and their effects take place only when the card is resolved and the minion is actually in play within your area. The final similarities between both sets of orders are the card, link, and kicker sections of the minion and action cards in the game. Each card has a specific color associated to it that is represented by a large moon icon in the top left corner of the card. This is called the card's color. Now below the large colored moon are one or two smaller moons that designate the color of the cards that can be linked to that specific order. 
For instance, a big ghost here is a yellow minion with a green and red linker. Therefore, if a player has another card in their hand with either a green or red as their main color, such as Zacharias Sands here, then that card can be played within their chain of cards because they link together via the rules of a chain. The final section is the kicker, which is essentially an additional chain text that is only triggered if you link an order to the appropriate color. Let's go back to my previous example, but this time let me play Tag Team Takedown as my linker from Big Ghost. Here you will notice that the color of my card, which is green in this case, still follows one of the two linkers from Big Ghost. However, the kicker at the bottom of my card is now a yellow moon. When my chain resolves, the kicker effect will take place here because Big Ghost's main collar is yellow and my kicker collar is yellow. Kicker effects are an addition to normal chain effects of the card, and although kickers are somewhat difficult to work in at all times, their effects and uses essentially extend the abilities of any given card in the game, so getting them to fall appropriately is one of the several nuances that players will quickly need to learn in order to be effective with their cards in hand. The last section on the cards that I'm going to cover pertain only to the minions, so let's take a closer look at a few of these examples. In addition to the names, claim or purchasing cost, collar, linkers, and kickers, minions also have a strength and health associated to each of them. The strength is the red number in the upper right corner, and it depicts an amount of damage that the minion inflicts when it attacks. Finally, each minion has a health, which is the amount of damage that it can sustain before it is destroyed. Now, health is indicated by a number of red slashes on the sides of the cards, ranging anywhere from 1 to 4 red slashes, or 1 to 4 health. For instance, Volko here has an initial health of 4, while Indigo 6 only has 2 health. Now, for each point of damage that is inflicted upon a minion, players will rotate their cards 90 degrees clockwise, effectively reducing that minion's health by 1. Also included in the base game are 12 starting minion cards, which will form each of the player's starting initial hands. Now, these minions are inherently very weak in comparison to other minions in the game, and can easily be identified by the yellow color of their card titles, as well as their zero claim costs. Starting minions also are unique in the fact that they have an in-play text that exiles them, or permanently removes them from the game when they are discarded or destroyed, essentially only making them viable for a very short period of time in the game. The last set of components that I'm going to discuss are the box and card dividers. This is the retail version of the game, so it comes in a very similar size box as the two Thunderstone expansions, along with all the necessary divider cards. The divider cards are really great because they separate the orders not only by minions and actions, but also by card color, which is essential for players who like to play with at least one of each of the five available colors. And not to spoil too much here, but there are also three dividers for unannounced promotional cards in the future, but you didn't hear that from me. Let's take a look at the game's setup. We're going to set up a four-player game of Nightfall, so players will start off by shuffling all the wound cards available together into one single stack, placing it face down into the middle of the table. Players are going to count off cards from the top of the stack equal to ten times the number of players that are participating. So for this four-player game, there's going to be 40 total wounds. The wounds will be turned face up and placed on top of the rest of the existing wound stack. Each player will then be given one starting deck, which will have two copies of each of the six different starting minions that we earlier discussed. Next comes the draft, which is very unique to the deck building genre. Players are going to shuffle all 24 of the available draft cards together and deal four of them face down to each of the players, with the remaining draft cards simply being placed off to the side for the time being. Each player will then choose one of his four draft cards to keep by placing it face down in front of them, and then passing the remaining three draft cards to the player on their left. Now, the card that they kept constitutes the start of their private archives, which is a stack of cards that only the owning player may claim or purchase through the course of the game. Now, players will then choose a second draft card from the three cards that were passed to them to keep, likewise placing it face down once again into their private archives in front of them, and passing the remaining two cards to their left. So these two cards are their private archives once again, and only cards that they may purchase from through the course of the game. Finally, players will pick one of the two remaining cards that were passed to them and place it face down into the center of the table. This will start the common supply. 
and the final card in their hand will simply be removed from the game. At this point, each player will have two cards in front of them in their private archives, as well as four face-down cards in the common supply in the center of the table. Players will then take the remaining draft cards that we had previously set aside and deal additional cards into that common supply until there are eight total cards in the common supply. Players will then simultaneously turn over all the cards that have been drafted, both from their private archives and the common supply, replacing it with those draft cards with corresponding stacks of minions and action cards from the game. Once again, the draft cards are simply there to help you set up the game, and they are not used for the actual gameplay purposes. Finally, each player will shuffle his starting deck of 12 cards and draw 5 to form his initial hand. And a starting player can be determined randomly or by any mutual agreeable method. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual gameplay. Nightfall takes place in turn order, and since I've covered most of the elements and mechanics in my overview, I'll just briefly go through the game's four main phases. The first phase of a player's turn is combat, which requires players to attack other players with all of the minions that they currently have in play. Players may send these minions at any one player or divide them among several players, and it's during this phase that much of the player's strategy will develop and mature with repeated plays of the game. Deciding whom to attack is very important, especially when players may block attacks with their own sets of minions in play. Combat is handled via strengths of the attackers and the health of the defenders. Each attacking minion inflicts damage equal to its strength upon either a blocking minion or the players themselves. If attackers are blocked by minions, then the defending minion absorbs as much damage as possible until it is destroyed. This is done by rotating the minion equal to the strength value of the attacker. The defender player receives one wound card for each point of damage that is not absorbed or overflows from any of the blocking minions. So as a player, it's really vital to keep a steady flow of minions at all times, both attacking and defending. And the trick is, players must attack with all of their minions in play. And once they do, they must discard all of their attacking minions once combat has been resolved. So I know you're asking how that is possible to have defenders in play if you are forced to attack with all of your minions on every turn. And the answer comes in the game's second phase, called the chain phase. Once all the attacks have been resolved, the active player may play orders from their hand for various gameplay effects by effectively chaining cards together. The active player may chain as many minion and action cards from their hand together as they wish, as long as they link the cards together per the rules of my previous examples. Now the true beauty behind it doesn't stop with the active player. Once they are done adding cards to their chain, then each of the opponents in clockwise order may build off that chain by themselves linking to the last card played in the chain. Each player has only one opportunity to link as many cards as they wish to that chain. And after each player has had a chance to play cards, then the chain is complete. Which leads me to the tricky part. The chain is actually resolved in reverse order, so the active player who actually began the chain will be the last person to fulfill his chain's text abilities, otherwise known as last in or first out. Now the cards in the chain are not considered in play until that specific card resolved, and this is what creates a lot of the game's subtle and not so subtle conflicts and strategies. Timing is everything in Nightfall, especially in four and five player games, and learning when to chain and when not to chain is as important as deciding which cards to purchase and claim for your deck. Players that can understand why it's important to chain on some people's turn and not important on other players' turns will always be better prepared to, to defend themselves from attacks as well as make attacks when their turn does come around. The third phase is the claim phase, which allows players to purchase or claim cards from both their private archives and the common supply. Now, players claim cards by expending influence, of which each player starts each of their turns with two automatic influence points to spend. Additional influence can be gained, though, through card effects that are in play, as well as by discarding cards from their hand at a one-to-one -one ratio. So you can gain one influence per card discarded. Now, players may claim as many cards as they like on their turn, including multiple copies of the same card, as long as they have the influence points to spend. And similar to other deck building games, any claimed card that you have goes to the top of your discard pile face up. 
The fourth and final phase is the cleanup phase, in which the active player will draw back up to five cards in hand. Now, players are allowed to keep as many cards in their hand from their previous turns if they so wish to do so, which again is quite unlike any other deck building game out there. And they are only required to draw cards if they have less than five cards at the end of their turn. After they have drawn back up to five cards, here's another unique thing that will happen. They check their new hand for wound cards, and they're allowed to discard any one of them to draw two new cards, effectively using the text of one specific wound card. Now, having wounds is typically a very bad thing to do, but here it allows players in these type of situations to effectively help them by drawing lots of cards in one specific turn, which allows them in hindsight to do more chains and get more kickers as the game progresses. And there's simply no hand limit in Nightfall, so you can have large conglomerations of cards in your hand at any one given point. The game will continue on in this fashion until all 40 wound cards have been dealt into players' decks, with the winner being the player that has the fewest number of wounds dealt to them. Nightfall is definitely the most deliberate diversion from the normal deck building style of game that I've ever played. It provides something entirely new, yet it retains most of the mechanics that fans have grown so accustomed to. The biggest draw of the game will ultimately rely on whether or not fans appreciate this departure from the typically relaxing style of games such as Thunderstone, Dominion, and Ascension to this more confrontational and combative underlying tone. Now typically before I begin the review process, I try to play a game no less than a half dozen times each. Now with Nightfall, we've logged a total of 14 games in two days, and I can confidently state at this time that this game still feels very foreign and unfamiliar to me. And the reason is not because it's a bad game by any means, it's just so radically different than anything else I can even compare it to. Trying to figure out the nuances of each card, not mechanically, because that's very easy to do, but strategically is really akin to piecing together a puzzle that you can't quite figure out without having repeated plays of the game. Now, in deck building games as a whole, for the past three years, no matter what game you've played, players have been so conditioned to play as many cards from their hand as possible in their turn that it's almost become inherent to do anything other than to keep that type of mentality. In Nightfall, players must strategize many turns in advance in order to be effective both offensively and defensively. And learning when to play cards into chains and when to hold cards for other players' chains is crucial to one's ability to survive some very aggressive onslaughts by other players' minions and actions. And it's not until you've played the game several times until you really appreciate just how refreshing and welcome this unique style of game is to this genre. If you enjoy multiplayer combative style games, then Nightfall is most definitely a game for you. And no matter the number of players involved, it still typically plays in less than 45 or 60 minutes, which makes it a perfect game for repeated playthroughs. Now there are some inherent problems that I have personally with the game, most of which are more likely due to this being the base set and the first in the series. First, there are simply not that many cards available at this time, with only 24 combined unique minions and actions outside of the starting decks. Deck building games really kind of thrive on variety and having a lot of variety in your game, and this can really only be fixed with additional expansions. Again, a very small nuance thing for me personally. Second, there is not a lot of variety in the cards themselves with only three types of game techs currently available being Chain, Your Chain, and In Play. And it would be really nice to see additional abilities included in future releases as well as more symmetry between the different factions within the game. As a base game though, Nightfall does an excellent job of introducing players to a new and somewhat radical style of deck building game that completely removes the solitaire nature of its founding with a fast paced, no holds barred, fist to cuff style of play that may or may not be for everyone. I personally happen to thoroughly enjoy the game and feel it is one of the best and most solid deck building games out of the blocks in years and look forward to future expansions that can really open up the universe in exciting and unique ways. So that is Nightfall. I am Jeremy Salinas and thank you very much for watching.